Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're not subscribed to our podcast, I do encourage you to do so with your favorite podcast software, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or the Amazon Music app at amazon.com slash otrdetectives. Also, be sure and check out our Famous Investigator t-shirts, available at famous.greatdetectives.net. Tomorrow is the deadline to get into the first batch, but you can still order by November 29th to get your uh, t-shirt by Christmas. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of Sam Spade. And I have to uh, warn that there is a bit of audio missing from this episode. Five minutes, in fact. However, I think the story can be followed pretty well. It's always tricky with these episodes where we don't have all the audio. Like, if an entire half is missing, I won't play it. But five minutes seems like we can work around, particularly on a series that's so popular and actual episodes so scarce. Now, the gap starts in the middle of the commercials. We miss Sam attempting to woo the widow and all the banter that goes with that. And we pick up in the middle of Sam's conversation with Rudy Ramos, a shipmate. And uh, that is courtesy of Martin Graham's book, The Radio Adventures of Sam Spade. So all that out of the way, let's go ahead and listen to this episode. Original air date, September 5th of 1948. And the title is The Stella Starkeeper. The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, the non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil, again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Sam Spade Detective Agency? It's me, sweetheart. Back from resisting arrest. Oh, Sam! Oh, oh, Sam, you better not talk. The homicide people may be tapping our wire. Let them tap, Effie. I can take my medicine. Perhaps it's better this way. I'm strangely content. I'll walk down that last mile with dignity and a plum. A plum? You'll even be eating while you're going to your last? Why not, Effie? Why not? If this caper was to be my last, then so be it. It brought me everything. A woman's passionate love. The smell of salt air clean in my nostrils but and... you struck Lieutenant Dundee. That was the best part. An officer of San Francisco's police people. It was glorious, glorious. Oh. Now calm yourself, Effie. Take a fortitude pill. Pull down the shade. Speak to no one. I shall skulk down alleys and secret byways as I come to you to dictate my report on the Stella Star Caper. <laughs> Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. Mom, don't look now, but school days are just around the corner. So I'd like to suggest that every day before the children leave for school, you remind them to get that neat, well-groomed look with Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Wild Root Cream Oil not only grooms the hair neatly and naturally, it also relieves dryness and removes loose dandruff. So for the children, for Dad, and for yourself, Mom, get Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, now in a new 25-cent get-acquainted size. Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, a friend of the family. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. (coughs) Date, September 5, 1948. Uh, To Mrs. Stella Starr, Aboard the uh, Stella Star, Marina Yacht Basin, San Francisco. 
From uh, Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Subject, the uh, Stella Star murders. Murder? Well, Sam, if she's dead. Uh, sprung at the seams and pumping water, Effie, but still afloat. Sam, what kind of talk is that? Salty talk. Uh, shall we continue on a course? On a course? Oh, I mean, of course, Sam. <laughs> Dear Stella, if uh, anybody had told me that the man who walked into my office had a wife like you, I would have believed it. Because he was obviously a very wealthy man. He was wearing a very expensive skipper's uniform, a thousand bucks worth of Leica camera, five hundred bucks worth of binoculars, a platinum bosun's whistle with a star ruby mounted in it, and a goatee. I'm a very wealthy man, Mr. Spade. I do not say that in boasting, but as a point of information. Thanks. I like to get as many facts as I can from my clients. Your name? Star. J. Wellington Star, master of the schooner Stella Star. Name for my dear little wife, sir. A picture? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh? <laughs> yes, indeed. I call her my little mermaid. Uh-huh. What does she call you? Twinkie. Okay. But to the point, sir, it is not my dear little wife that is lost. It's my Webley Vickers. Revolver? A pistol. Blowback, semi-auto, point four five five caliber. Uh-huh. Anything special on it? Not particularly. <clears throat> oh, there's one thing. The grip is fashioned from the skull bone of a pygmy, which my dear little wife shot by accident while elephant hunting. Pygmy elephant? No, human. I'm quite fond of the pistol, both because it's, it's a good gun and as a reminder of happy days in the African bush. Uh, here's a picture of my dear little wife and her hunting tags. Mm-hmm. Is that the uh, pygmy standing next to her? Yes, before the accident. Uh, poor little chap. Was quite melancholy all the morning. Well, sir, when you've found my Webley, bring it round to the yacht. We're moored in the marina basin. Have you uh, reported this to the police? Oh, good heavens, no. Why not? It would mean no end of bother. Might even hold up my port clearance. Undoubtedly merely a matter of a crewman needing money. Filched it from my quarters and took it to a money lender. Uh, don't you imagine? Uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll give it a buzz. My fee is $25 a day. The gun worth that? I'm a very wealthy man, Mr. Smith. Well, then make it 50 <laughs> We uh, settled for 35 and he left. After a leisurely lunch at the Blue Bottle Bar and Grill, I asked myself, if I were a seaman who wanted to unload a hot gun, where would I take it? Well, that narrowed the field to about a half a dozen friendly waterfront pawn shops. It took me about an hour and a half to check Friendly Sam, Friendly Rufus, Friendly Tom, Dick and Harry, and uh, Joe Friendly's place. If your husband's story was true, I was sure I'd find the missing gun in one of these places. But I did. Uh, you got a Webley pistol in here lately? Foreign gun, bone grip? Oh, I got all kinds of guns. Foreign, domestic, Japanese. All types of handles. Bone, ivory, plastic. Or... Take your pick, choose it what you like. It. Uh, let me see that one there. Ah, uh, that I can't sell. The ship ain't sailed yet. I got news for you, Joe. This one's hot. <laughs> a living newspaper he is. How do you think I keep this place so warm with the fogs rolling in all the time? Who pledged it? Nah. Funny thing, I forgot to write it down. Uh, What's your interest? What's your name? Spade. Sam Spade. Private eye detective. The very same. Take it. An honor to be in cooperation with you. You'll sign my guest book. A pleasure. Thank you, Joe. Well, Sam Spade. Good night, sweetheart. It was dark and the fog was rolling in by the time I got to the marina yacht basin. The schooner, Stella Star, was pretty too as she rocked gently in her berth on the channel side of the jetty. I did a take after I let myself down a border, a stern. I could have sworn that it was none other than Lieutenant Dundee of Homicide standing on the forward deck, but it was. I uh, took the Webley pistol out of my overcoat pocket and sniffed the barrel. The unmistakable odor of freshly detonated cordite assailed my nostrils. It had been fired at least once since you knocked off that pygmy. I peeked into the deck house. Your husband's yacht was brightly lighted, and it was through a porthole that I first saw you. I didn't have a bit of trouble identifying you. You were the only blonde there wearing lipstick and an off-the-shoulder gown, which was beautiful, what I could see of it, which was the off part. About then was when I was collared by who later turned out to be Mike McGinnis, chief mate of the Stella Star. All right, turn around. Lieutenant! Look, I'm not a... Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's this? 
Uh-huh. Lieutenant! All right, come on, you. Uh, who's that? Mike McGinnis, Lieutenant. Found this guy hiding on that cruiser to our starboard. Oh, good work, McGinnis. Have a gun on him, huh? Yeah, a Webley Vicar. Let's see. Hmm? Well, now, what's your name? You, you, huh? Yeah, Dundee, it's me. Uh-huh. Who are you working for, Sam? Well, you know I can't tell you that, Dundee, but I'll give you a hint. The name he gave me was J. Wellington Starr. Mm-hmm. Where'd you get this gun? Starr hired me to recover it. It was stolen from him. I found it in a hawk shop. That's all I know. Is he dead? That's right. The stiff's in the cabin. Come on. Good evening, all. <laughs> Now, please. Now, please. now, Mrs. Starr, we mustn't be hysterical. Do you identify this man? Oh, no, that's him. The face, the porthole. He was wearing a gray hat, I remember now. Now, that's a very serious statement, Mrs. Starr. Are you absolutely sure of your identification? Oh, Lieutenant, that's the man who shot my husband. I never forget a face. Now, now, please, Mrs. Starr. Mrs. Starr. Why, why this perfidious formality suddenly? Well, look, Donnie, you don't seriously... Sam, I, I don't know what to think. That is true. Some nodal ballistics tell me the slug in the body didn't come from this gun. Oh, well, it did, Dundee. Oh, you see, he admits it. Is that what you're doing, Sam? Oh, I don't make any statement without my lawyer, but this gun smells like cordite, and this dame here smells like frame. I... What's she got against you? I don't know. I never saw her before in my entire V. Oh, Sam, how can you say that? After all we've been to each other, the promises you made. We're in this together, darling. You shot him. All right, all right, but because because I inflamed your passions. But I'll stand by you. That's the only You're decent You're a fine, thing. brave little woman. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, Mrs. Starr, I'd like you to make that statement again. This time we'll write it down. Oh, must I, with poor Twinkie's body lying there so... Now, you Sergeant oh, Polo, get this stiff. Get, take it away. Oh, I get that head again. Quiet. Now, Mrs. Starr, you say you went ashore early this afternoon. Uh, yes, Lieutenant. I wanted to see Sam. I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to tell him that it was all madness and could never be. But I disagree. We met at a little restaurant off the beaten track where we often meet. Yeah, well, when... what restaurant was that, Mrs. Starr? Uh, well, just a little Italian place near his apartment. No, just a small place. It uh, just says pizza. Uh, and they draw the curtains across the booth. Iron curtains, Dundee, and I always arrived in disguise wearing an iron mask. Oh, yeah. Sam. Uh, continue, continue. When you, when you left the boat, you took something with you. Yes, Please. the gun, that gun. Twinkie was so upset, over, over Sam, that is. He had threatened self-destruction. I was afraid to leave him alone with this gun and... and, 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 and now, I... don't stop. This is exciting. <laughs> Darling, you tell the rest of it. We may as well face it out. The truth is our only hope. Well, okay. Here's the rest of her story, Dundee. No, 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 no. I can't let oh, you... Oh, here's her story. No, I'll tell... I'll... She told me it was all over between the sea. The Twinkie had threatened to blow his brains out. Then she showed me the gun, see? Mm. I grabbed it away from her. There was a struggle... Then she pleaded with me. I told her if I couldn't have her, no other man would. She jumped on her broom and came down here to warn him. And that's when I put on my gray hat, cocked my pistol, and made a widow out of her. You got all that, Dundee? Now, wait a minute. You, you endorse this statement, Mrs. Starr? Why, I, no. Yes, Okay, I... Dundee, okay. You got all the dope. Now, take me down and book me or let me go home. Well, Sam, I'm afraid I'm going to have to take you. Why, you... You, Stella, were still wearing a puzzled expression under your tear-stained makeup when I embraced you and turned quickly away and said to Lieutenant Dundee, I am ready. You called after me, but I didn't look back. My face was in a mobile mask as with slow, steady, inexorable steps, I walked out into the fog. Lieutenant Dundee cliched along beside me. And another thing, Dundee, I'll nail you for false arrest. Did you ever stop to think how long you've been a lieutenant of detectives? What does Mrs. Dundee say when you come home day after day without a promotion? Pretty story for the papers, too. Gullible dick enmeshed in yarn of seagoing glamour girl. Well, uh, you'll be back uh, pounding a beat. How will your stupid little son explain that to his classmates at St. Agatha's? Well, speak yeah, up here, you cat got your tongue? Sergeant Powell House. Go and g- 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 check on things. Yeah, will check you? on things. Right, right, right. Look, Sam, I know that dame is lying. But why did you have to play along with her? You leave me with Hobson's choice. Yeah, that's you... smart of you, Dunny. That's shrewd. But look at it this way. Give her enough rope and she'll dig her own grave. There are more ways of skinning a cat than swinging it by its tail. Follow me? Yeah. Combined operations, Dunny. I'll go on the lamb, see? Now, now, wait, wait. 
Gee, I don't... I'll give her a pitch, something like this. I told that story to save your neck, I say. Why, she asked. Because it's a beautiful neck, I say. That's the part where I kiss it all the way down to the shoulder, Yeah, see? yeah, well, Sam, it won't wash. Look perfectly clean to me. Now, be serious, Sam. I can't do it. You shot off your mouth, now you have to pay the piper. Now, Dundee, all I have to do is demand a paraffin test. I haven't fired a gun since that day you scored 48 out of a possible 100 on the police range. Uh, and I'll publish that score, uh, too. I had a cold. You... Sam, are you leveling? I am. You'll be an object of ridicule, the butt of all abuse, target for the night. Okay, Sam. Hit me. Do I have to? I can't look like I let you go without a fight. Okay, Dunny, but I'd uh, I'd like you to know this is going to hurt you worse than it does me. Well, thanks, Sam. Now take it. No, watch it. Hey! Hey, come back here! Boss, stop me off! Ah, they'll never catch me alive! Never! Makers of Wild Root Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. Now, here's important news on good grooming. If you want the well-groomed look that helps you get ahead socially and on the job, listen. Recently, thousands of people from coast to coast who bought Wild Root Cream Oil for the first time were asked, how does Wild Root Cream Oil compare with the hair tonic you previously used? The results were amazing. Five better than four out of five. Better than... What did you want? Confession to a murder if you got one handy. Who? Oh, that pig dwelling in the star? <laughs> Could be an honor which I don't deserve. Yeah, somehow. well, you may get it anyway. Who well, knows? Could be. You had motive more than you needed. You were in love with his wife, which adds up to a crime of passion. And he dumped you off in the middle of nowhere, which could add up to a murder for vengeance. But I was not there. You were. I didn't have the pistols. You did. The widow did not accuse me. She accused you. Yeah, she's changed the story. She's accusing you now. That's a lie. She don't go to accuse me. She loves me. Sure, sure. She loves me, too. She loves that chief mate. She loves anybody she can pin that murder on. She loves anybody that can help her make it stick. And the one that's left over gets the jungle treatment. I don't listen to no more bad talk about the Stella. I think you say too much already. I think I'm going to kill you with this. Hey, watch no, it. No, I teach you manners when you speak of a lady. I cut you. I cut you in little pieces. Drop the ship, Rudy. Oh, oh. Come on, come on, get on your feet. Get up. No, no, I got enough. I, I, I tell you, they kill me anyway when they find out what I've done with that cargo. Then you did carry something. Sure. They had this load ready to go. The regular pilot got malaria. It was a way out. I want to find her again and pay off that pig. So I don't stop in Mexicali. I keep on flying. I got a plan. The $200,000 of... Narcotics, I'm going to send that pig a star into prison so he don't put his dirty hands on her no more. You mean you planted some narcotics on the Stella Star? Sure. How did you get that stuff on board without anybody knowing? My Stella, <laughs> this girl is crazy for me. Get some clothes on. You're turning me in? What charge? For now, smuggling narcotics and stealing this plane. The murder is something else again. I got to clear myself. And if I can't find the guilty party, I just soon hang that on you, too. I hope the guilty party wasn't you, Stella, dear. Because if it was, your Latin torchbearer was not the man to help me put the torch to you. It was 3.30 in the a.m. when we arrived aboard the Stella Star. I had brought along with me for the occasion none other than Lieutenant Dundee, who, except for the adhesive tape over his inscrutable chin, was wearing dark glasses. I could have sworn I saw your lovely puss framed in the cabin porthole as we made our way up the jetty. But when we got there, the cabin was bare. I could almost have believed your story about the secret panel, but it was true after all. I pulled down on the light fixture over the map. There was not only a secret panel, but a secret passageway. A narrow flight of steps, ladder to you, led into a compartment that looked like part of the forward hold. You and Jungle Love Number Two, the Irish philosopher Mike McGinnis, were bending over a pile of roll your own type tobacco sacks. A few thousand dollars, a hundred grand I can always use. You mean you won't need me? That's what you're thinking, isn't it? Well, I've got an interest in this stuff. If the skipper had been caught with it, I'd have gone up with him. What are you talking about? My husband didn't even know that stuff had been brought aboard. Oh, what are you handing Rudy me? Rudy brought it and I helped him. Poor idiot thought I'd just send Wellington up and clear the decks for him. 
Oh, so that's what you had in mind. Oh, my darling, of course not. I did it for you. Yeah. I'm going to make the pitch. Oh, easy, Dundee. We want to hear this. Oh, Stop yeah. Okay. I'll believe it when you turn him in for the murder. But, darling, I already told Sam that Rudy did it. Did he? Of course. All right, then that's one more reason for keeping quiet about this stuff. Sounds crazy going all that trouble to frame a man and then knock him off. Oh, that's a better story without it. Oh, darling, you think of everything. Kiss me. All right, I'll take over from no, here. You both give. I come and get it. I'm on my way out. You... Stop, Dandy. Hit the floor. Sam, is he dead? No, not yet. Mike, can you talk? Ah, uh, you just scorch him. That's all. No, I... no, no. It's pretty bad, Mike. Whatever you got to say, you better talk fast. Well, it's bad. What's it? Who killed the skipper? Uh, me. He was drunk. Yeah? Threatening to kill himself. She got the gun away from him. Gave it to me to hold on to. I was going to hide it down here. And uh-huh. So I happened to find this cache of dope. I figured he's enemy half of the risk and none of the profit. You figured he's I... a natural for a suicide verdict anyway, so all you need is the right moment when nobody's around to have it happen. But in the meantime, he came to me about the missing gun, which gave you the bright idea. You plugged him and then hocked the gun so I could find it easy and arrive with a murder weapon on me. Oh, Mike, you did it for me. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, well, you got it, Dundee? Yeah. Uh, huh? Was... What? What? Lieutenant Dundee explained the caper to me as we sat over a lukewarm cup of chicory in his hideous apartment. And once again was I struck with the well-nigh indescribable thought processes of this otherwise simple man. And it suddenly struck me that Dundee, spelled backwards, is Ednud. Thank you, Stella, for your generous offer of marriage, but it just wasn't meant to be. Uh, period. End of romance. Will that be all, Sam? Yeah, what do you think about it? Of what, Sam? Well, my big adventure. Must have been awfully dull for you, Sam. Why do you say that? That girl. She must have gotten on your nerves terribly. Well. Having to make love to her in line of duty. Yes, I know. You're practically the male, not a hurry. Hey, now, wait a minute. I think you owe me an explanation. Oh, really? I thought it was self-explanatory. Excuse me, Sam. I really must type this up. Hmm. Not a hurry yet. If you're particular about your appearance, then be particular about your hair tonic. Always insist on Wild Root Cream Oil, the famous non-alcoholic hair tonic with lanolin that grooms your hair neatly and naturally, relieves annoying dryness, and removes loose, ugly dandruff. Now, get Wild Root Cream Oil at your drug or toilet goods counter in the new 25-cent Get Acquainted Size bottle. Also, ask your barber for a professional application of Wild Root Cream Oil hair tonic. Again and again... The choice of men who put good grooming first. The copy is ready, Sam. Will you please indicate your corrections on the margin in number four pencil, please? Your smears. What gives? Really, Sam, with the amount of money expended on office supplies in the agency, I cannot be continually wearing out racers. Of course, you have the right to use any pencil you wish. In fact, it's quite obvious that you'll go your own way anyhow, even if your life is in danger. Making friends with all sorts of riffraff that should be in straight jackets. F. Not my place to criticize, Sam. After all, the choice of your friends is your choice. But any girl who would shoot down a pygmy in cold blood would stop at nothing. F. And as nearly as I can make up, she didn't. F, don't. You know what always happens. I know, and I can't stop. I just get all wound up, Sam. Come here. No, don't touch me now, Sam. Not after that awful... Come here. No, Sam, no. Come here, come here. My lipstick, you just... Oh, Oh, Sam, I'll never go where flamingos fly, will I? I got news for you. Get your hat and coat, purse, gloves, and face on. It's all on. Didn't you notice? Oh, I thought you were gaining weight. Where are we going? Where flamingos fly. On the jukebox and all around the wall. It's called the Flamingo Barn Grill. Oh, Sam. And do they have exotic drinks and everything? Sure, and free oyster crackers. Oh, lovely. Come on, get a move on. The blue plate special goes off at 9.45, and it's cream tuna on rice tonight. How nice. Good night, Sam. Hey, wait for me. I had cream tuna for lunch. Good night, Sam. Hard to get, eh? Well, two can play at that game. Good night, sweetheart. The 
Adventures of Sam Spade, Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, are produced and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade is played by Howard Duff. Lorene Tuttle is Effie. The Adventures of Sam Spade are written for radio by Bob Tallman and Gil Dowd. Musical direction by Lud Gluskin with score composed by Renee Garrigang. Join us again next Sunday when author Dashiell Hammett and producer William Spear join forces for another adventure with Sam Spade. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. This is Dick Joy reminding you to... Get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. It keeps your hair in trim. You see, it's non-alcoholic, Charlie. It's made with soothing lanolin. You better get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. Start using it today. You'll find that you will have a tough time, Charlie, keeping all the gals away. Hiya, Baldy. Get Wild Root right away. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, I love that character of the pawnbroker giving Sam the gun because apparently he's a fan of the radio show. Although it's not said in so many words. I did feel the gap uh, a little bit with the missing audio. I think that's just more from a story development uh, rather than from a mystery uh, standpoint. Also, I don't think Dundee was required to arrest Sam on the basis of a statement that was clearly not serious. More frustrated that Dundee was actually acting like this was serious. There was a plot point that sounded quite familiar. That of the gun being made from the bone of a pygmy. The fact that I think quite rightly disgusted Effie. It seemed like I'd heard another episode where that was a plot point, and that, I think it may have been Let George Do It. That's such a specific thing, it seems like that's not just the sort of plot point that's going to be randomly copied over. I couldn't find any episode where that was used, at least with a casual search. But I don't know, if anyone remembers uh, one where that was a plot point, do let me know. Well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Peter, Patreon supporter since April of 2020. Currently supporting the program at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Peter. And that will actually do it for today. If you're not subscribed to our podcast, I do encourage you to do so with your favorite podcast app, whether it's Stitcher, Tune in, Overcast, or the Amazon Music app at amazon.com slash otrdetectives. Also, if you are enjoying this podcast, please be sure to rate and review it wherever you download your podcast. We'll be back next Monday with another episode of Sam Spade, but listen in tomorrow for I Hate Crime, where... Mr. Kent, Mr. Kent. Why the excitement? Come in. I had to see you. She was wearing a light coat that she hadn't bothered to button. Underneath was the same filmy thing she'd been wearing at her apartment. She must have left in a hurry. You must help me, Mr. Kent. Why? It's Dennis. What did he do? He's dead. When? A half hour ago. How did it happen? Someone shot him. Keep talking, Moira. After you left, Dennis and I talked things over. Finally, we decided to come to you and ask for help. With or without a gun. Mr. Kent, please. Okay, go on. I thought it would be best if we saw you here in your flat. So we waited till 6.30. Then I went into my bedroom to get some clothes. No sooner did I leave Dennis than... Someone came in through the front door... and shot him. Why? Because of the money. Money? Moira, if I'm going to help you, I've got to know everything. 
I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.